Conservation Ag Update is brought to you by Biotill Cover Crops. Hello and welcome to Conservation Ag Update. Noah Newman here. Great to see you. Let's begin in Austin, Minnesota, where you could say Tom Cotter took a big risk many years ago going to no-till in cold, wet soils. But hey, it's paid off big time as this week he received the prestigious Leopold Conservation Award. Cotter says the combo meal of no-till cover crops and grazing has been an absolute game changer for his farm. I'm all about biology. I really like what it gives to me. Of course, these sunflowers bring in pollinators, bring in, like we saw, just a hummingbird right now, and bees. Bees are crazy out here. Monarch butterflies are around. I'm 40% organic and 60% no-till. And I really like that because I get to see both sides. You know, most no-till guys just think, oh, the tillage is bad. And the tillage guys on the organic side think it's the chemicals bad. And really, it's not, it's not a battle of which is worse. It's really a battle of try and limit everything, all disturbance. And that doesn't matter if it's physically or chemically. I try and reduce everything down and do as much as I can with plants. Control weeds with plants. Control tillage with plants. He's got uh, some fields where he has strips of sunflowers and then a strip that he'll use for grazing a mix of cover crop species and another strip of sunflowers. So. When we're looking at how we can regenerate the soil and put carbon below ground, we're looking at these things that are gonna actually help to increase carbon flows and having plants growing as much as possible, which he has with the diversity of the plants that he has growing and then stimulating activity by the plant, photosynthetic rates to get that carbon going below ground through grazing and um, the management that he has put in place is, is just amazing to me. Tom says, quote, if you can be happy, loved and take care of the land, that is priceless. Can't wait to hear more from Chris and Tom during their sessions at the upcoming National No Tillage Conference in St. Louis. Well, from one Leopold winner to another, Russell Hedrick is always an open book when it comes to sharing the keys to his success. And on-farm trials are a must for the Hickory, North Carolina no-tiller, especially when it comes to biologicals. We're talking about some of the trials we did on our farm. This is the way we set it up where we do check strips. Um, so we had a check strip, pivot bio, um, with the 40 units of nitrogen, minus the 40. We had organics. Um, there's a product out there called Fish Shit. You can't say that on TV, we learned. Um, all right, y'all are still with me. Um, there's insole algae, and then we had another check strip, and then uh, Concept Agritech had a product called Soul Revive. But this is how we figure out what we do on our farm. You know, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of trial data out there, there's a lot of good information, but if you're not setting something up like this, you're missing a lot of good information. But essentially, you know, did it make bushels or lose bushels, and what was our net return? And that's how we decide what we move to the farm the next year when it comes to biologicals. Um, how many of you in here use biological products? How many of you test them before you put them on your farm? That's way more than I thought it was gonna be. So one of the things we do with Rise Bio is we send our soil, our seed, and our biological product. We just sent them some, and they're gonna run it here in the month of January. But if we're gonna try a new biological product, they'll actually test it in our environment with our seed, and we'll know, is there a chance for a positive return before we actually buy it in, in bulk and, and get it to the farm? This stuff is not cheap. Um, we're gonna spend you know, thousands of dollars a year on a biological product. Why wouldn't we spend 200 bucks and test it in the laboratory before we get it to the farm? Some of the stuff that we're seeing, so polymer degradation, that's for residue breakdown, phosphorus release, nitrogen cycling. There's a lot of good management decisions that we get from this testing for 200 bucks. Russell set the dry land corn yield record with 459 bushels per acre in 2022. All right, let's check in with Baltimore Ravens fanatic McCain Vogel for today's Cover Crop Connection. McCain. Thanks, Noah. Well, many of you are familiar with Iowa no-tiller and executive director of the Conservation Technology Information Center, Ryan Heiniger. Recently, I had a chance to chat with Ryan and his son, Matt, who is currently a senior in high school, about the new cover crop business they started this summer called Clearwater Cover Crops. The company is a custom farming business meant to remove barriers for other farmers to adopt cover crops and accelerate their soil health efforts. Let's listen to Matt and Ryan as they describe the most fun and the most challenging parts of the father-son business so far. The funnest part would be just driving, riding the tractors, going to see new fields and I just cover new ground. Uh, it's always exciting when you get to pull up to a field and unfold and go. Uh, 
one of the more challenging things. Uh, when we first bought the cover trap cedar, there was a like a valve in one of the hoses that it wasn't assembled right. And so just trying to get that all figured out and squared away it took uh, quite a few tries and a few calls to Umberforth to get that squared away, but got it figured out and was able to then get it working correctly. You stole my answers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, on the on the frustrating part, just like any new piece of equipment, it's uh, getting things uh, figured out. So when it is go time, uh, things are operating as efficiently as possible. And uh, thankfully, we did get that accomplished really before the, the peak of the season uh, hit uh, in late September. Um, on the rewarding side, I think just watching him in his element um, and getting these life experiences to be uh, a successful entrepreneur and to be able to uh, be a little bit of a support system for him, but also just, uh, you know, moving that relationship. Uh, now that he's he's uh, an adult and uh, going from father, son to just business partner. Uh, I think that's something that uh, both uh, right here and now has been rewarding, but also just, I think, you know, once a couple of years tick by looking back, that'll be even more uh, rewarding as uh, something that we did together. Well, Matt says it can be tough to juggle all the responsibilities that come with being a senior in high school and running a business at the same time, but he tries to get his schoolwork done during the daytime so he can spend more time in the tractor when he gets home. And of course, if you want to hear the rest of the conversation with Ryan and Matt Heinecker, you can check out the latest episode of the Cover Crop Strategies podcast at CoverCropStrategies.com. Well, that's all for this week's Cover Crop Connection. Until next time, I'm McCain Vogel. Back to you, Noah. All right, thanks, McCain. Let's go ahead of the curve now with the solar-powered Solix sprayer robot from Solymphtech. The company says 50 of its robots reduced herbicide volume by up to 98% last year in Illinois and Indiana. And Taylor Wetley says a brand new refill station could make it even more practical for farmers to use. One item that we're really excited to introduce and be launching this next season is our autonomous refill station. So on this video back here, you can see it actually in action, but this auto refill station will uh, be stationed in the field. Solix will back up to it. Actuators and cameras will zero in on the back of the robot and it will automatically refill the unit. So very important feature of the technology very helpful for the growers as they look to optimize their time in the field. And so very excited to be scaling this uh, across our customers in the coming season. In addition to that, just to get an idea on the Solix footprint, we'll be in around a dozen uh, states in the U.S., mostly in the Midwest, but continuing to kind of broaden that reach. Pretty cool technology there. All right, moving on, our team got an up-close look at how biological products are made during an exclusive tour of the Terramax facility in Egan, Minnesota. From R&D to quality control and manufacturing, Brian Kibble Kisley takes us behind the curtain. Everything starts with the single isolated microbial species. So if you're a farmer, depending on what you're growing, we have a exact microbe to grow your crop. It all starts with the incredible work by our R&D team with the single isolated microbial species. Everything starts with this, this uh, isolated culture right here. And then it's brought through our fermentation system where we do large batch fermentation to get you guys the, the microbial species that you need for your crop. Each one of those isolated microbes in the culture tubes I showed you before is then grown on a large scale fermentation system called the bioreactor. Each one of the vessels you see over here on either side of the room is a different microbial species. Each microbial species is grown for a specific crop. Here we have azospril and brazilense. This is a nitrogen fixer for the corn crop. And inside here, it looks like a bunch of pink liquid. But the fascinating part about this is the high number of bacteria in this liquid. Inside this liquid, you have 1 billion microbes per milliliter. And that volume of microbes increases your crop potential and boosts your yield. Now, something at Terramax we take very seriously is quality control. We want to make sure the microbes that are stated on the label have the highest counts for the farmer and the optimal yield potential is secure. So the, the microbes are grown on a large scale fermentation and we want to do that quality check like I talked about. So in order to do that, our R&D scientists are plating them out on these media plates you can see here. And depending on what crop you're growing, whether it's a corn or whether it's a soybean, we're making sure that the microbes that are stated on the label come in your final products and those alone. 
Now that we've gone through the laboratory, we're moving on to manufacturing. And here we have our dry manufacturing process where we take our liquid ferment, we stabilize it to make sure it lasts on your shelf for up to two years. Wow, very interesting stuff there. You can catch the full tour on notillfarmer.com. That'll wrap this episode up. Story ideas, email me at innewman at lessetermedia.com. Thanks so much for watching as always. But hey, before we go, here's No-Till Farmer editor Frank Lesseter with a special message about the upcoming National No-Tillage Conference. The best in the business, that's what we call it. This is the global gathering. Network with fellow no-tillers from across the country and from several foreign countries. This is your chance to make one-on-one -on -one connections that you will need to move your no-till operation forward in 2026. An energetic four days of nonstop learning and unlimited hallway networking with the most innovative forward-thinking minds in no-till during this January event that kicks off your 2026 crop production season. 34 years strong. The National No-Tillage Conference is trusted by previous attendees to guarantee that you will go home with dozens of practical no-till ideas you can immediately put to work in your own operation during the coming year. Don't miss your chance to be part of this tremendous event. For full event details, registration, pricing, and hotel information, go to www.notillconference.com. I look forward to seeing you in St. Louis on January 6th to 9th. Let's make this the best national road tillage conference yet. <music>